Hey, welcome back to the show. Again, we're with Senator Vince Palestina, New Jersey Legislator, District 2. Real quick, uh, uh, the budget today, as we speak, dating ourselves a little bit. This won't be aired for a little bit, but talk to us anything uh, statewide that's going to be coming on down. Yeah, so there's a lot of good things in the budget, obviously. We, uh, if you recall, we, I, Don Guardi, and Claire Swift were the only Republicans that voted for the budget last year because of the research park, because some of the money we got here in Atlantic County. Uh, we're going to get, you know, a boardwalk fund this year in the budget, and so they recognize, you know, we have to make repairs to our boardwalk, you know, one of yep. the most important um, pedestrian facilities we have in the entire That's state, right. and so we're going to get a lot of money hopefully coming back to Atlantic County for that, hopefully more investments in the research park. Of course, you know, one of the reasons we voted for it was the biggest property tax rebate in the history of the state. Property taxes have always been a concern in this state, and so we're thankful that the governor and the uh, legislature has recognized we really got to start working on property taxes in the right. state. Talking about kids not being able to have opportunities to get started here, property taxes are crippling. And so we need to really continue the conversation through the state budget. How do we get property taxes under control and how do we support our local municipalities, support our school districts, support our teachers with the right amount of funding uh, to make sure that they're able to do the job that they were hired to do? So important, basic, but so important to keep people in the state. Uh, you know, when you talked about the boardwalk too, the first of its kind, the longest of its kind, right? Yep. Uh, so, so we're going to go on to uh, your uh, supporting law enforcement. You know, as a former law enforcement officer, near and dear to my heart, the men and women, and not only the men and women, but the families as well. I know we signed up for the job, and you go do your job, but uh, it's not an easy one. So. It is not, and that's the same thing where you're talking about giving teachers tools and resources. Right. There is absolutely no question. We need to give our law enforcement professionals the tools, the resources, and the ability to do their job. And that is just a huge thing we need in society everywhere for us to move forward with law and order. I just get frustrated. We all probably get frustrated. You being a former law enforcement official, you, know, you get a couple bad apples in every profession. And the yeah. profession I'm in, as a Senate, you, oh, yeah. you find more bad apples in this one than anywhere. So we right. certainly know, you know, you have bad apples everywhere. Bad but for you, a lot of different reasons, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no doubt about it. Right. But you can't let that no. taint an entire profession. Exactly. So we need to support everyone in law enforcement. I mean, they go out every day to protect us. You know, provide our security and also to serve the public. And so we need to do, you know, together, we need to just support them, give them everything they need to do the job. I gave the keynote at Atlanta Cape Community College for our recruits that were graduating. And I said one of that. We are not going to let a few bad situations taint the entire thing. And we know, you know, being in law enforcement, every day is not going to be a great day. Yeah. You're going to have some tough days and you're going to, you know, it's not always going to be. Um, a wonderful thing, but you have to try to revert back, whether you're in position I'm in, whether you're in a law enforcement position like that, try to revert back to the day when you actually were starting, mm. the pride, the excitement right. you felt. So when I was starting the Senate, you know, try to remember how excited you were when you were starting in your law enforcement right. career, the pride you had because you're going to be able to serve the public. Try to focus on that, and we got to try to drown out some of the minor extreme voices on some of these social media platforms because they are not helpful to supporting our law enforcement professionals. Now, sit behind the desk doing what they're doing. And uh, to talk about that, those days in the beginning of uh, my career and other careers and whatnot, uh, Colonel uh, uh, Callahan, you know, blue sky days, I hear that quite a bit too. You know, when those, that's how you want to meet people or whatnot. And I believe a lot of it uh, as well with law enforcement is training. You know, more and more training we have, uh, I think the better off is, and as we go into, you know, 2023, things are a little different though, but it is so important. Uh, I scratch my head sometimes because I know, like you just said, that there's many, 95%, if not more, are good men and women who just want to go do their 8, 12, or 16 hours because you get held over. You don't go home if your relief doesn't come in or there's a situation. So, you know, I appreciate that as a former law enforcement uh, officer and uh, many of my friends still involved in it. Getting parents involved, you touched on that a little bit. But yeah, I mean, again, supporting law enforcement, providing for our right. security, and then getting parents involved. We have just seen, you know, over time where parents have to work harder and harder to make ends meet. I mean, it used to be, you know, one parent would go to work, mom would stay home, or dad would stay home, and you'd have a parent there kind of all the time. Maybe they took a part-time job. Now, kind of every parent, because of the, you know, the situation in New Jersey, how unaffordable it is, right. Both parents always have to work. You know, the kids are off at school, and you just do not get as much involvement from parents as we saw in the past. And I just think this is absolutely critical going forward, too, is we have to figure out ways where parents can be more involved 
in their kids' lives, making decisions about their education, making decisions about their future. You know, in some cases, unfortunately, as we talk about getting, you know, notified about some potential criminal justice issues. But I think by and large, and you know, I did a bill that would allow for parents to take paid family leave to go on one of their kids' class trips or something. So parents aren't faced with having to work or being able to spend time with their kids. And I just think that is really important to the future as we try to make sure we're involving parents in, in their kids' lives. Because ultimately, they're the most important people in their lives and their future. A hundred percent, our future and, and, and uh, leaders, of course. Um, and to your point, whether it's uh, public servants, who I like to call politicians, politicians or law enforcement or teachers or whatever it may be, even their workforce or whatever. It's not their responsibility, you know, to, to, to raise them and you can't expect them to raise, you know. So, I mean, that's one. I have uh, two sisters that are teachers and they're wonderful women, but it's just like, you know, well, I'm not your parent. You know what I mean? So I, I, I get it. A uh, juvenile justice legislation. Talk to us, please. That was one of the ones we've been talking about. Yeah. Obviously, you know, that when we did the new marijuana laws, one of the issues was law enforcement stopping a minor couldn't do anything, like couldn't interact with right. the minor. It's just not going to work as we go forward. You know, we all got in trouble when we were kids. Oh, yeah. You got to brought down, you went through the holding cell, right. maybe your parents were notified, came down to get you, and then you didn't do it again. There's consequence right. to certain actions. And so we did the bill that would allow law enforcement to question kids with either marijuana or alcohol. You know, if they're under 18, take them down to the station, notify their parents, as should happen, they're minor children. If they're 18 to 21, just confiscate whatever the material is. Right. If they're over 21, obviously now it's legal in New Jersey, and so they're on their way. But, you know, you need to give law enforcement the ability to do the job. One of the issues is obviously being able to question minors and making sure that minors understand when they do things like that, that there has to be some consequence. You just can't go on your way because we've right. seen too many times in this society now where somebody gets stop for doing something, even when they get down to the station, they're right back in the same spot doing the same thing over and over again. Can't have that. It's not going to work going forward. And it really is a problem in our, in our tourist area when you're talking about Atlantic right. City or Ocean City, some of the beach areas. Yeah, we have to take care of that. Uh, we got about a minute and a half left, uh, Senator. Class three officers for rural areas. I know this is near and dear to your heart. Yeah, it is. Uh, school security, obviously, right. with my kids in school is right. uh, absolutely... Um, so important, you know, make sure that everybody has the ability to protect these educational facilities. And so you see class three officers in, in places with uh, local police departments, but you don't have it in some of the rural areas. And you're talking Buena, Buena Vista, some of the right. rural areas without local police departments. This uh, would give the sheriff's office the ability to hire class threes and put them in the schools. And so again, trying to be proactive, making sure we're getting um, professional law enforcement people in these schools to protect right. them, protect our children, protect our teachers. It's so important. So, uh, Senator Vince uh, Palestino, listen, we thank you so much for coming out here. That's it for this show, but we're going to definitely have you back. Uh, we're going to talk more about Atlantic County, Atlantic City, what's going on as we go into summer 2023. I want to thank you. I also want to talk about Motley Crue and Def Leppard and all these other places that I see you as well. But this man, folks, we're lucky to have him, Claire uh, and Don Guardian, working for us in Trenton. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. Anytime, Mike. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. And we'll We'll certainly come back anytime you want us to come out. You got it. So folks, hey, stick around. We'll be right back.